I've got this 1956 Ford Model 640 tractor. The hydraulics aren't working on it. So it appears to be okay in the pump area because when I take this out with it running, it wants to shoot fluid out. So, and I also have fluid going back here. And when you take this plate off, it actually has fluid flowing from it. So I don't suggest having that off with the engine running. That's not what I'm saying, but I can just tell that it's been pumping fluid. So I'm gonna take it apart. I'm gonna do a little bit of, uh, try to diagnose this as I go. Make sure you watch this entire video before even attempting this, because you can learn from my mistake or learn some shortcuts. I've looked through this hole when I put fluid in it, I actually changed the hydraulic fluid. And when I put fluid in there, I don't see any coming out anywhere when the tractor's running. And also you can see the piston appears to be stuck in here. So I'm gonna take it apart. I've got all these bolts broken loose all the way around here. And I'm gonna take my impact and run them out the rest of the way. I'm gonna take that cotter key out, cotter pin, whatever, and knock these pins out so that I can take this off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all these bolts out now. So with these, it's just a matter of taking that pin out and then hammer it with a screwdriver and then do the same for the other side. I did the same thing for back here. So I went ahead and took all these bolts loose and this is the unit that controls. It's like you take this off, you can mount another like external hydraulic controls. Here's the other side of this. It's got O-rings. All right, I took that last bolt loose right here. And I took my pry bar and put under this right here and just pried on it. It didn't take much at all. So you can see it's ready to be pulled off. All right, so these four bolts here are all this same length and then these here are fine thread bolts actually yeah that one's fine thread and those were coarse so these apparently just hold this down and then the other ones we're about to find out what they're holding on to that one's a little bit shorter than that one That's a long one. That one's a little bit shorter. Actually, that's a long one. The only short one was here, shorter one. And the other ones are the same length. So just remember that a little bit shorter when it goes here, which would be self-explanatory when you go putting it back together and it wants to bottom out. But these two back here are shorter yet. Got my little tray set up here on my trash can because I know it's going to be a, a mess with hydraulic fluid. So I'm just going to flip that over and set it right here. And as for these bolts, I'm going to lay them out here so you can see the proper length. Like I said, these are fine thread. This one was here. Okay. So this one, this one, and this one are the same length fine thread and then this one's the one a little bit longer it would appear to be that the fine thread bolts that i took out actually could have stayed so see i'm learning as i go but i'm also going to cheat a little bit here i put my gantry crane on because i've had a little back issues lately from moving a refrigerator so i'm actually going to use this to pull it out or pull it up all right i lifted it up from the rear and apparently it looks like I could have left the fine thread bolts in. All right, so there's the hydraulic unit, the piston and the cylinder. So I'm gonna take it apart and see if that piston's stuck, which is what I'm suspecting. All right, so down in here in that cylinder is the piston. And that rod is pushed by the piston, but it's not connected to that piston. And it just looks like the piston seized in that cylinder. Cause I know when I was looking through the, in the hole, the fill hole right here, uh, when, it, when this was on the tractor, I could move these arms right here. And this part here, let me set this down. This part here would move back and it was pulling this 
arm, but the piston wasn't moving with it, which is not connected, so it really shouldn't. But still, if I had the lever, this lever moved to lift these arms as it should, this piston should actually move towards this, the bottom of the cylinder here. And you can see there's a little bit of rust on this cylinder. So that's just what I'm suspecting that it's seized in there. So I'm gonna try to get that apart, get that piston freed up. All right, so I got it apart. As I mentioned before, I could have left those fine thread bolts in place here, 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 and here. And that would have held it together as a unit. And then I could have taken it off. And I thought that might be the reason for them having the fine thread. All right, so I took this pressure valve right here. You know, it was screwed in here. I took that valve out before I ever took this apart, wondering if that was the top of the piston down in there, if you can see. All right, right there. And sure enough, once I got this apart, and I'm able to see the piston in here, and I see for a fact that that is the top of the piston. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna stick my screwdriver down in there, see if I can get that to move. There it goes. So yeah, I was able to get it to move. It's actually moved pretty far. All right, so I got that piston to move, which also tells me I could probably, sh if I needed to, I can shoot a little bit of air in there and get it to push out. But I think this, yeah, this patch is here also. There, you, know, you can see. All right, so here's what I did. I put my finger over this hole and I shot a little bit of air in this hole or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. And then the piston just slid right out. Actually, go easy. Don't shoot too much air in there because then you're going to get yourself in trouble. Okay, so there's the piston. It's got this rubber ring around it that's got a tear in it. So I'm suspecting that that could be the issue. But I'm thinking I'll get a new piston ring, basically. Clean this up. Clean up the cylinder. Replace these O-rings. Some of them stuck on here. They're really hard. Like I said, clean this cylinder out. Probably take a little ball home to it. Just to make sure there's no rust. And uh, put it back together. And see how that works. Also looking at these O-rings right here. They look to be in pretty bad shape. Pretty flat. So that should be where the hydraulic fluid comes in. Those pipes. These would be the O-rings where it comes in too. And these are all hard and flattened out. When I took this piston out, this was in that groove, like the O-rings coming apart. Now here's something else to consider. This valve right here, when you push in on this valve, that's what moves the fluid in behind the piston. And then any extra fluid is gonna be this relief valve is going to let it go because the pressure has got to go somewhere. It can't just keep pushing the piston. So this is going to have hydraulic pressure in here pushing and it's got to, there's a spring in here. This is the hydraulic lift cylinder safety valve. I don't know that you could really test this because hydraulic pressure is so much higher than regular shop air pressure. So just make sure that's really good and clean. And then you can take this valve out and make sure that it's, it does not scored or dinged or anything. And, because you got to have that as the control for the hydraulic. This is basically held in by these three bolts holding this plate, and there it is. Just be very careful with this. You don't want to ding it up. Probably wouldn't hurt to clean it with a little bit of Scotch Brite, but you know, I would definitely be careful not to nick it. So I'm gonna set it there for just a second. Well, as it rolls away, the spring in there. All right, so on this other side, I took those three bolts out and then the spring was behind it. It's the same spring you just saw on the other side. This cylinder in here that this valve rides in that I need to actually wrap this up with a towel. You got a couple of set screws here that hold that sleeve in in case you ever had to replace that or hone it, whatever, you can take that out. But I wouldn't suggest doing that at this point unless you unless you saw some scoring in this right here, I wouldn't worry about it. And I don't see anything wrong with that. 
look at the piston really good make sure it's not there's no rust probably clean that up with some scotch bright all right and of course replace that it goes around there and then clean out the cylinder probably hone it or scotch bright it really good but also look down in these passages and make sure that, that fluid flows through them easily through here all of them just clean them out and then down in there i know you can't really see it but look down in there to make sure there's no debris sludge any of that kind of stuff in there hopefully you learned something from this video thanks for watching uh, i'm going to put this thing back together as soon as i get the parts in and maybe i'll make, make another video and show you how it all turned out and then i'm also going to be working on other stuff i've got a, a 841 ford power master over here that i got to get working on next so i'll probably do a video on it and show you how i got it running once again and keep the history alive and these old tractors i love them i'll be posting more videos so if you like this video hit that subscribe good luck if you got any comments suggestions questions post them down below and i'll surely answer them thanks a lot